Here you have to constantly <coughs> coach, teach, and lead because Barlow didn't know where the media room was. So we were giving directions down the hall to go into the uh, West classroom here. But um, now he changed the game. That's the guy that changed the game. There is no other story, in my opinion. He changed the game. Ian Roosevelt did a great job on him defensively. On the perimeter, our bigs were better and tougher on the inside in the second half, and we won. Brett, what, what adjustments did you make defensively in the second half? I mean, we, I didn't, we didn't do much different. They were setting screens really high, which um, when you chase screens, chase guys off screens, and they adjust and set them higher, you have to make a decision. Are you going to eventually go under some of those? And uh, we did a little bit here and there, just kind of mixed it in. But the biggest change was personnel. You know, Barlow came in and changed the game. And, and uh, you know, I think there's, a, there's an old saying that, you know, your scheme, you, you, try, you, you try your scheme. If it doesn't work, you try harder. If it doesn't work, you try different personnel. If it doesn't work, then you move on to a new scheme. And, and uh, we were close to a new scheme, but uh, didn't have to do that. Alex, you saw a lot of what happened in the first half with them cutting and getting to the basket. Was that on your mind when you came in there early in the second half, or what was your mindset? Um, after the uh, handover game, I had a film session with uh, Coach Lou. Um, I didn't, I didn't play that play really as hard as I should have. Um, our team didn't play as hard, so Coach Lou told me if I went in today uh, to be a daddy, and he just said play hard, try to bring energy. And as Coach Stevens always says, you know, try to lift the energy of the other guys. So when I came in, I was just trying to bring energy um, and just follow what the coaches had said, told us to do. Alex, it seemed like part of that energy was forcing turnovers. You forced a, a shot clock violation. Uh, you forced to travel with your on-the-ball defense. Um, did you feel like you were playing well on that end? Yeah, I felt like um, I was feeling good out there. I had a lot of energy. Um, felt like I was moving my feet well. Um, and I had great, great help. You know, the shot clock violations are not all on me. The teammates were uh, locking down their guys. So I just felt like I had great energy. And the rest of the team had a lot of energy in the second half, too. Coach Ball State had a season high, 19 turnovers. How much do you attribute that to errors that your team forced versus just mistakes that Ball State made? No, I thought I thought we did a good job um, being active with our hands in the second half and loose balls we came up with. You know, in the first half we didn't. Cam and Nicky um, loves playing against Butler because he just comes out and dominates us on the glass every year. And um, he did again in the first half at six rebounds. I think four of them were offensive. And uh, you know, I, I think that we've got to, we've got to improve, but that was the most ball pressure we've had all year in the last 18 minutes of the game. All right, talking about that ball pressure, did you notice in Phil maybe if you get up really in Jesse Barrett, he, he tends to over or over dribble and maybe force some things that in the first half? You know, I don't. I, I you know, I take a different approach to that. I think people are going to be really critical of his game because he's being asked to do a lot, and he should be. He's really good, so he's going to. You know, if you have to play against Roosevelt Jones all day. That's a hard day. I mean, I, I don't know. Even if you score it, that's still going to wear on you. And uh, I thought Rose did a good job, and I thought Jesse did a really good job in the first half. And then maybe Rose wore on him a little bit at the end. But he's a really good player, and, and he's got an ability, an interesting ability. I talked about this with Brandon Paul when we played him in Maui. When he shoots it, you're obviously scared. But when he drives it, he's got almost like an extra step because his steps are so long. And he's uh, he's a hard guy to guard. I think he's a good player. Well, I think you had one of their best defenders on you, Chris Bond. You talk a little bit about him and, and trying to match up score on him. Uh, he did a. I thought he did a good job. Um, but also we were executing well offensively, and I got a lot of open looks. I uh, just didn't knock him down. And, um, but he did a good, good, pretty good job of you know trailing me and. And they, they pushed a lot of ball screens also, so that was a different look as well. But I, I thought we did a good job of executing. He has such long arms. I mean, is he one of these guys you really have to fight off ball screens to get that open look? Yeah, yeah, he uh, definitely contested a couple as I came off a of ball screen and, and shot. So he had, he had a hand there. But I, I, I think we also, you know, we did a good, good job of executing with their pushes on some ball screens and forcing his baseline. So I, I, I thought we were good.